Hey guys, quick break in the podcast for a word from today's sponsor, Shopify. Sign up for a free trial today at shopify.com slash wide open. That's all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash wide open to start selling online today. Shopify.com slash wide open. Thanks Shopify. Back to the podcast. All righty guys, welcome back to the Life Wide Open podcast. We always remember to say this at the end, but never in the beginning. So if you are watching and you enjoy the show, I just hit the thing on my chair. It made it <laughs> go down. Carry on, uh, sorry. Please subscribe, or if you're on Spotify or Apple, rate us five stars. Whatever those things are, please do them. We would really appreciate it. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. First off, can't believe you're drinking a beer, CJ. I know. That's what I said. I was thirsty. Yeah, I just, I just actually can't. So right now we have Ben mad, like under the weather. He's got, really sick. <laughs> He's got the really yeah, sick. He's got the yeah. I guess if you guys can compare it to anything, if you ever seen SpongeBob when they mm-hmm. get sick, the yep. suds, yeah. The suds. Evans down with the suds. Yep. I believe I'm coming down with the suds, so I am drinking a healthy drink for once. I'm a heavy believer of on the vitamin C, lots of it. You can maybe not uh, surpass getting sick, but it helps. Like I'm a big believer of that. It a so, bit. Yeah, Ken's Ken was laying down before this too, and he's thinking he's sick. You see, I was feeling pretty sick on Sunday, mm. the last day of Vegas. So we just came back from Vegas, and that is where everyone got sick <laughs> what because a we were doing yeah. a bunch I mean, of running around. We were flying, we were getting little sleep, and on top of that, we were drinking and uh, having a blast. I don't know if Ben's actually sick or if he's just that hungover. No, I thought that at the concert because he was talking about how he didn't feel good, all this. And I was like, that's what it feels like to get old, buddy. Like, your hands yeah. are worse. And then, no, yeah, it, it turned totally out to sick, be real, yeah. real sick. So, definitely a bummer. Definitely not good for the productivity, which we needed after Vegas because <clears throat> the boys did not do so hot. That's, yeah, I think, the worst so part is, is like, we get back, you know, it was, uh, a, we went to SEMA. It was amazing. Kind of a business trip. Got to enjoy ourselves. Then we come back, like, all right, let's, you know, let's kick it. Get let's back to it. Get back to it. And then everyone's just like, not only down bad there, down bad uh, financially. You know, so some of us lost a lot of money. Yeah, dude, I think Ben really came out the worst on the trip. I hate to speak for him, <laughs> but I feel like I have to because yeah. I don't know if we're going to come back to this on the podcast. Basically, Ben lost, at least visibly in front of me, $2,000. He lost more than that, I think. It, it was oh. probably around somewhere between 2500 to 3000 Oh, my gosh. Um, <laughs> I'm I- I thought I lost a lot, but then I dropped all my cash off at the bank and was like, Ooh. "Well, actually, you because you said you were going to bring like ten grand." No, I said five. Five, sorry, five. Wow. And I only lost twelve hundred dollars. Okay, That's pretty bad. That's still bad. pretty bad. It's, it's better than I expected, though, because I was thinking it was going to be closer to two, but I just yeah. straight up didn't count the cash until he went to the bank. So I don't want to like lock in that Ben lost that much, but I watched. He said he was down, I think, a thousand or maybe a little more than that. And as we were walking out the door in the casino, we were already outside. He said, let's go back in. I'm going to put a thousand on red. I think you did the I same did it thing. I did as well. Yep. And they lost. They yeah. lost that thousand. And then Ben took 500 out again and put it on red and won that. And then he got all hyped up. He's like, I'm going to do it again. And I think he put the other 500 down mm-hmm. and then lost, lost it. So that. he lost 1500 in like a matter of a minute and 30 seconds on our way out the door. I was actually legitimately sick. Like visibly sick after we did that because well, maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's yeah. what it is. If we're down bad on gambling, it just like ruined our emotions. Cause like as much as we kind of spend money on things that probably wouldn't be considered good investments, such as cars and four wheelers, dirt bikes, we at least can use them for fun on videos. It's where we spend all of our money. So it's a bit justified because I hate wasting money. I hate having to spend money on shit like that, that I don't need. And I was like, ill on the way home with myself i acted like i didn't know you guys were gonna go do that so that way you didn't have to partake i nice. knew what was going down had my thousand dollars with you ended up how how did you end up on the whole weekend eh well so here's here's my uh take on vegas you guys know don't gamble that much gambled the most i ever have for mm. sure i ended up as far as that goes believe it or not probably like total Probably threw in a total of 300, came out with a total of 350 over the entire so you weekend. came up 50 bucks up. There you go, yeah. dude. You are the only winner. But you here's should. where I go down in Vegas is that you, I'm a sucker to give uh, money to someone in need, but, you know, homeless oh. people or whatever. So when we were wandering around SEMA, Kevin, Evan, and I were uh, hitting up all the small 
kiosks or not even kiosks, booths. You know, there's guys there, like there's Dodge and Ford, and they have the biggest booth ever possible. And then there's guys with legitimate an eight by you know eight foot table selling one product. No one speaking to them. One guy there, maybe a banner in the back. Are you going Any around? Pity bot from them. Uh, pity bot from one guy, <laughs> and then you get? Uh, some like Dewalt drill holders. Oh, and oh, Kevin, yeah. oh, Kevin yeah. was the one instigating that. He was like, "Are they indestructible?" He's like, "Well, I've never broken one." Kevin puts <laughs> it on the ground, stomps on it. No didn't way! Didn't break it, but we're like, "Geez, Kevin." Jeez. Dude, Kevin's a savage he sometimes. Is. Yeah, whatever, whatever he gets like just out in that setting, like our buddy Kevin. Yeah, mm-hmm. he and then. I bought these things that when you take it out, it's like malleable and it's like plastic. But when you take it out and expose it to light, it turns hard. So you can like oh. fix bumpers with it. But that one was my funniest because those guys were the best like salesmen. And then I'm like, right, these guys, they got like chains and like maybe kind of expensive watches. They must be good salesmen. And then I seemed interested. I'm like, genuinely, I could see my, I could see myself using it. Like this is, a, I've never seen anything like this. It hardens and you can drill into it and it's cool. And then... He's like, sweet, start showing me. I'm like, I'm, I'll take like the smallest pack or whatever. And the smallest pack was 150 bucks Ooh, for like, Mike. you know, I'm like, ah, uh, and I was going to bail out, but I was like, just that, okay. screw it. And then the guy just like starts bickering back with the other guy who's also wearing chains and a watch and shit. And he's just like, wait, why don't you just sit on, help this guy out? He, he, I got to help these guys. And they have a New York accent. Yeah. Like you could just, <laughs> it was just so funny. So anyway, catching guys like that. So I lost my money on random stuff. Oh, like this. <laughs> you know, none of this stuff seems that bad, though. Dude, no. uh, Evan and I are at the it's Liquor nice World, uh, and we're waiting, the for liquor our, world. <laughs> we're waiting for our Uber driver back, and a cab pulls up, and he goes, yo, what's up? You guys got you guys got some of that? And we're like, uh, nah, sorry. And then he's just like, you guys look like you're into cool clothing. And I'm <laughs> like, yeah, who isn't? <laughs> And then he's like, I got a brand. You want to check it out? And then I'm like, he like gets out, starts going to his trunk. I'm like, of course. What the fuck? No way. Sure. I thought this didn't happen. Anymore. I would run if he's like. He seemed, again, it's just the vibe you give off. I, I feel he Ken, seemed. you get easily yeah. startled though on the street. He seemed uh, pretty <laughs> Not, nice. He doesn't have much of a peripheral <laughs> right now, running. dude. He's yeah, like, true. you can't trust people in these big cities like that. His, you can't. His name was Gus, but he opens it, pulls out a, he's like, it's called Rare Cloth. Wait, right? Rare, yeah. yeah, rare cloth. And then he pulls out, he has like two designs. And I'm like, they're actually kind of fire though. All I got is 47 bucks. He goes, they usually 50, but I'll take that. <laughs> I got bad news for dude. you, dude. That, that That's an online brand. Really? Yeah. I've, I've seen <laughs> well, and like bought way, stuff I, from I like it, but that's fu- that's just funny. That's I don't like, know if I it's got his, a brand. but it's probably, honestly, he might have been getting a deal because there's no way that that sweatshirt would be less than $50 on the internet. Right, but. as I thought. That, honestly... You might have still came out on top with that because watch in like five years or something or even a year that rare clothing brand is just gonna shoot up. It'll be like the next Gucci, and he was that would be you'll be like, yeah, I bought something back when he was selling stuff out his trunk, <laughs> just like uh, just driving taxi cars. Yeah. Just like what's that one brand? The guy was selling shoes out of his trunk. Tom Ford was it or uh, really the Nike guy? No, there was it was like I've heard of that a though. Bougie, bougie brand, I think. Well, also, also the Nike guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah every, I mean, a lot of people were selling stuff yeah. out of their trunks. So you got to respect the hustle. Yeah, I guess so. That's where I'm down on the weekend, though. Moral of the story. I'd say that's at least a you got something least. instead of just putting it in a video machine and watching it disappear. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So breaking down the weekend could be probably put into three parts: the the gambling slash the gambling, and then SEMA. SEMA is awesome as always. If anybody ever has an opportunity to go, it's really cool. But there is the Hoonigan Burnout Pit. And this is something that I have not seen too much on the internet other than like the day it happened. So they have this uh, burn yard or whatever they call it. People bring out crazy built up cars and basically just drive them until either the wheels explode or the engine explodes. Last year, an engine exploded so hard that parts of the engine, like the pistons blew out and like went into the crowd. So you're obviously. really close. I mean, it was in our last team of video. Yeah, it was how we, close you were to it. So this year, some guy comes out in just this boat of a challenger and it seemed to have stock suspension, but he had a, like a lot of other stuff done to it. Full wrap. And yeah. So he turns the corner and instantly the diff breaks. So that's why he was only oh. spinning with one wheel. So he's doing like a one wheel wonder burnout and blows to the max to the max. Yeah. To the, to the floor rev bombing one wheel burnout. And it basically, the tires started getting taller and taller, and then it exploded, blew the whole side of the car off, 
and flew like 75 feet over a semi and landed on top of a show car. Like a whole half a tire. Yeah, like just the, and what it looked like. Yeah, just like the the tread of it. It, it looks like they sliced the tire. Like it basically like RC card, you know, when you rev up an yeah. RC yeah, car. Yeah, and it just goes... Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it messed up his car really bad, but thankfully didn't mess anybody else up. Apparently, when it flew over, it hit this like early 2000s truck at the mother's booth that was like perfect. Flawless. Yeah, flawless. And it like hit the roof and left a big tire imprint and then dented up the hood and like messed up the bumper. Yeah. But it like rolled into a guy in a wheelchair. Like he was okay, but it was like that. I can't believe they're allowed to do that show. I want I them to be able to do it, but it is so dangerous. I was nervous. After that, I was like, any time like a car had like the back end towards us, I was like, ooh, I'm going to duck down here. I don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. Like if that tire different pr- trajectory, bad news bears. Yeah. I don't know if like, I have anything on, of me on camera saying it, but last year I was saying like, dude, I can't believe we're able to get this close, close. to like, these cars. Like you're literally just a little barrier. Cement barrier. And like they have trophy trucks and stuff out there and they <laughs> could, if they, if the trophy truck hits that cement barrier, it's, it's going to at least get half the, it's probably going to go over it, at least yeah. half the truck. Dude, it kind of actually reminds me, they've become really popular, at least for me on Instagram, is those sideshow videos where people are just whipping it in the streets and like, or a street takeover video. And yeah. then dudes are always getting hit at those. Is it just <clears throat> me or have you noticed like more, more and more people are yes. getting hit? Because yeah. the, the videos of it happening are happening. I'm seeing more and more and more and more of them, or they fall out the car when they're trying to <laughs> freaking hang out. And they get freaking run over and pay yeah. people. I feel like we used to see them like a few and far between, you know, once once or twice a year. Let's say, oh, that, that was a good one of the guy getting his pants ripped off. That's a classic. But now I swear I've seen five in the last two weeks. I used to watch this guy on YouTube. It was called Super Supercar Suspects, and he kind of started yeah, with yeah. car shows, and then he started going to those and like filming them, which I thought was really cool. And never at those did anyone get hit. Right. I feel like the earlier people were the people that found out about it through somebody and they were smart. And now people are just like, it's getting too big. The drifters are getting bad. And the people there yeah. are such idiots. Well, the, it's like the bigger it gets, the higher the odds of someone being in the circle, circle. trying to drift their freaking <laughs> Nissan yeah. Maxima. Yeah. yeah, the bigger it gets, the higher their odds there's going to be a higher percentage of crappy drivers. Mm-hmm. And think of this. You like ten years ago when these maybe are start, this has probably been a thing forever. You're not getting you're not getting in there risking it for the shot because you don't have a nice phone. No maybe point. you don't have a camera with it all. Maybe that you got so true. You're like yeah. I'm gonna get in there with the wide angle. Yeah, I'm gonna make yeah. some reel that's gonna make me go viral, and then uh. it ends up being the dude behind you watching you get hit by the car. <laughs> yep. My favorite's when the oh guy gets gosh, hit by the car so and then he grabs like his gun falls out and he grabs his gun yeah, and starts, starts shooting like, at what him. The fuck? Yeah, it was crazy. Did yeah, he ever start so shooting? Mad. I don't know, actually. I, it's just still so funny. Like gets literally bopped <laughs> across, like skids twenty five feet and then takes out his like Mac and first bro, thing he does is grab his gun. <laughs> you get hit by a car, which is obviously, but those guys get just booted. Like Obviously, so you're funny. going to get booted, but I just have <laughs> never seen anything like that. Did you guys ever see the one where the guy gets... This has happened multiple times, but they get, like, ran over by, like, the back swinging, and the guy's pants get pants pulled fall down. down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he, like, rips his pants off. He gets back up. He seemed to be okay. <sighs> Dude, I hope they get to keep doing it, but that definitely is the craziest part of yeah. SEMA. You know, it's like the... It's cool. The event-wise, they have some racing. They have some, like, drifting, and that's all... Really sweet, but the Hoonigan burnout pit definitely tops it. Yeah, watching some dude go out there with like some built whatever, and literally that guy in that uh, Silverado, I think it was, legitimately did not lift off the floor <laughs> the entire time he was out there. And I think he just kind of gave up because nothing, his tires didn't blow and his engine didn't blow that up. Is- but he, he went for like three minutes. And I remember him last year. He went like, that's when they like went head to head with another dude. Oh, like, you yeah. know, single cab, short box, whatever. And they're just literally sitting there head to head, not even hardly in the car on the gas for, I don't know, yeah. five, 10 minutes. Gnarly. It's amazing that like, uh, well, there's a perfect example. My dad doesn't drive his uh, Camaro that he has. And I drove it to go bring it to the detail shop today or the other day. And it uh, filed a plug and would hardly run to the detail shop. And it has like 600 miles on it. And then you got dudes out there legitimately rev bombing their cars for 10 minutes and they're fine. Yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously they're built and all that stuff, but shit, we can hardly get a racing lawnmower to run. Right. I know. I feel like once it's good, it's normally good. It's good. <laughs> like, <laughs> But if it's not, then it, you're screwed. Yeah, it That's is amazing. Though. 600 miles. How do you have trouble with something like that? 
Yeah, honestly, no idea. But And then uh, to top it off as far as the crazy side, the motorsport side, the F1, they block off all the streets. Oh, yeah. I'm sure they, does this happen a lot in Vegas? No, like, this is like, I, they, I just no, no, I'm, doing I'm not this. saying F1 in general. Like, oh. I feel like they block the street off for like a lot of things, like every week yeah. probably. I don't know, maybe. But Seems anyway, like you see it. they start blockading all the streets. And then I was like, this will be cool. This will be cool F1 car. And then once the first time I saw it drive down and it didn't just drive fast, it drove and did crazy donuts. I've never heard anything like that. I've seen an F1 race on TV and I know they go, woo, 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 but I've it never didn't heard sound like a real anything thing. like real, that. Yeah. Hey guys, quick break in the podcast for a word from today's sponsor, Shopify. That's another sale on Shopify, the e-commerce platform with everything you need to run a successful online business. Shopify makes it easy to sell to anyone from anywhere, whether you're selling sweatshirts to someone in Alaska or shorts to a surfer in Hawaii. Start selling with Shopify and join the platform, simplifying e-commerce for millions of businesses worldwide. With Shopify, easily customize your online store to your brand, discover new customers, and build the relationships that will keep them coming back time after time. Shopify easily grows your business by helping integrate social platforms like TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. And if those customers come to buy something face-to-face, -face, Shopify has top-of-the-line point-of-sale systems to make your in-person sale a breeze. We use Shopify for all of our Seaboys TV sales. We love that we can customize our website to look unique for every drop, but yet it's still easy to navigate on mobile or computer. And when we host events, we can set up the Shopify point-of-sale system and checkouts are a breeze, and we can instantly accept every type of payment. We truly couldn't do it without Shopify. And thanks to 24-7 support and free on-demand business courses, Shopify is here to help you succeed every step of the way. It's how every minute new sellers around the world make their first sale with Shopify, and you can too. Seriously, guys, if you're ever thinking about opening an online store, there's no better option than Shopify. Take it from us. We use it every day. It's seriously the best. So sign up for a free trial today at shopify.com slash wide open. That's all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash wide open to start selling online today. Shopify.com slash wide open. Thanks, Shopify. Back to the podcast. Did you guys see the video of it driving through the casino at the win? Oh, oh, yeah, I did see that. The That's one cool. dude is just sitting at a table like, what the fuck is going on here? Wait, they <laughs> drove a car through yeah, the, the casino? Yeah, the F1, F1? Like, <laughs> right down a main hallway. There was like That's cool. limited amounts of people there, but it was like set up for that. Yeah, so we'll, F1. that reminds me of of driving my Bugatti, well, our Bugatti down the <laughs> hallways of the casino. <laughs> oh, gosh. Jumping stairs. When's that thing get here? Oh, yeah. Uh, we the the real question, Ken, is will it get here? <laughs> um... So we, Ben and I, you know, if it was anyone else, I would say you got got scammed. We got conned, but you got a really good was, excuse. But we we got to get the thing. So we were basically Ben and I were going back from we were going back from SEMA. It was just us two. We got separated from the group, and we were like, well, you know, we're in Vegas, so we start picking up drinks along the way, and it's kind of a long like walk slash tram ride, and we're going past this thing, and we see these this. Bugatti scooter, which has kind of been popping up. I've seen online, like Stradman has one, Jake Paul has one, and we see the Bugatti scooter and we go and look at it. Honestly, like it was pretty well built. Like it was pretty nice and it was sturdy. And supposedly it is endorsed by Bugatti. It, they probably don't make them in the factory, but I think there's some kind of connection. Like with Bugatti, licensing. obviously they had to have been like, yeah, we're, we're cool with working out with you guys on this. You put your name, our name on it. Anyways, uh, Ben and I bought it from these two guys. Debatably, was it more than the Cyberquad? It was fifteen hundred bucks. Oh, it's really not that bad. No, the Cyberquad cost really more. like cheaper than a one wheel. Yeah, fifteen hundred bucks. It's a pretty nice scooter, but so we go and these guys were trying to upsell us on freaking everything. everything. He was like trying to get us to buy this shitty little projector, shitty headphones, shitty phone chargers. He the only thing that was pretty decent was these phone cases, but he didn't have anything that fit my phone. But anyways, Ben and I like this is whole commotion. We end up getting the thing from him. We leave. He was trying to get us to like get a new one and then have it shipped, or just have us unbox it. But I was already on it and we were kind of on it, so I'm like, oh, I'm taking this one, the one that you had literally sitting on the showroom floor. <laughs> and I just like <laughs> left with it after we paid, and then he called my phone. Because uh, I gave him my number because you had to like have it shipped and I was going <laughs> to drop it back. I don't know. He had me fill out this whole thing. I was just like, oh, I'm buying a Bugatti. So it makes sense why you got to have fill out some identification. You know? And uh, he calls me. He's like, you need to bring this back. Yada, yada. Like, I, I can't oh, have you driving. And I was just like, 
<laughs> You'll just have to watch the video. Oh my but gosh, I was like, sorry, so man. Funny. The it's one real on the bad. Show floor it's real bad. Like... I wrecked it real bad. And he's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, I hit a wall. <laughs> it's in like three pieces right now. And I think I broke my arm. <laughs> he's like, oh, oh my no. God. <laughs> Fuck, man. And he's got this accent. And it was pretty funny. The best part is when you go, can I get a refund? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was, was like, like it's oh, cool. No. Like, Bugatti have like a, does Bugatti have a warranty on it? And then I was asking if I could bring it back, yada, yada. Um, but then basically, Ben and I go to go charge this thing, plug it in so we can go rip it around some more. And we realized we left without the charger oh. because we freaking took the one off the showroom floor. I asked so too. I was like, where's the charger? That's kind of what I was like. Oh, you at least got Bad the charger, deal. right? Bad deal. So now we're like, <laughs> God damn it. We just trolled these guys. How are we going to get go back there and get the charger? We need to get the charger. got to get right. the charger. So, and I'm like, well, dude, I can't go in there. I just told him I broke my arm. So, I at least walked down with Ben. I wait around the corner, and he goes walking in there. I wish he was here because the way he told me the story of what how the interaction went <laughs> was really funny. He basically just told him, like, yeah, dude, like, he hit this wall so hard and, like... Oh, my God. I don't know. Like, his arm's in pretty rough shape, but I think he's just being a big baby. <laughs> and uh, he does this all the time. And they were just, like, rattled. And it, the whole thing was super confusing because, uh, you know, we were filming it and... <laughs> they oh, were just, my God. Like, they're going to be talking like, what about the, the interaction. What is going on? CJ, this is what I pictured. This is you... <laughs> Oh, <laughs> dude, he was moving. Honestly, you've never seen that before. No. Okay, I gotta get a replay, dude. This guy's got his wind knocked so, out of him so, so big. hard. So yeah, I next week, this is you when you told him you crashed. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I feel so bad for laughing. Well, let me just hear this. Oh, dude. Picks the bike back up. Like he, I don't know if he can breathe yet. <laughs> He's just trying to breathe. Not a soul in sight. <laughs> He's okay. <laughs> he's, he's Dude, okay. I feel like I remember getting hurt like that as a kid. There's just nothing you can do but just want audibly scream that and cry. honk when he hits. <laughs> <laughs> so my question, is this ring video his house? Like he said, I hit this? Or did these did people, were they just at work and they like got a notification and they, they click like, emotion. what's going on in front of my house? And they just see that. Oh I also gosh. wonder that too because if you... <laughs> If you found that in the second scenario, be way funnier. Oh, <laughs> Just me. <laughs> oh my gosh! So that I mean, yeah, that could happen. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, basically, uh, we bought that scooter. We pay, overpaid on it. I think it was probably <laughs> worth maybe like twelve hundred to a thousand bucks. Which honestly, yeah, to have it at the time and be able to rip it around Las Vegas. Evan was like trying to grind it. I jumped down some stairs on it. Um, he paid and the fee to wait, get yeah, it now rather than yeah, wait was, three days. It was to get pretty it fun. Amazon. It was a lot more fun riding in Vegas than it would be around here. I'll tell you that much. Some dudes tried stealing it from us. You just have to watch the video. I'm yeah, not going to explain the whole video, but uh, yeah. Then we went to go ship it back, and the guy working at FedEx might have been <laughs> the laziest or the stupidest dude I've came across the whole time. Dude, I was so thankful to get back to Fargo and deal with like competent people nice that, yeah. people I, I i can't even like explain how nice it was that like the gate attendant at the airport at the fargo airport shout out to that guy so nice i was like man yeah, it was, nice a, it was refreshing to and be back home every interaction i've had since then has been someone who seems like they are not well, uh ten thousand brain cells short extremely like, stupid dude, yes. minnesota, well it's minnesota nice That's and true. also north dakota like yeah i think it's just these you know, the northern Midwest mm -hmm. is known for being super nice. And but also, I'd probably get sick of dealing, dealing with people in Vegas, too. D dude, the guy was, he wasn't even in a bad mood. I think he was either just really, really lazy <laughs> or really stupid. And I, I'm sorry for him if he's really that stupid. But, like, we brought it there. <laughs> so we bring the scooter there, and we're trying to ship it home. And I didn't want to deal with the guys anymore because we just trolled them. So, so you didn't have a box. 
No. Okay. And oh, I'm like, shoot. we we'll just go to FedEx and buy one and have it shipped back. And this guy's like, oh, I don't know if it'll fit. I'm like, bigger box. We'll <laughs> go and grab it. Let's see if it'll fit. He's like, oh, I don't think it will. I'm like, so well, let's try, bro. Too. Let's try. So then he goes and gets this box. Like, dude, it was just this whole fiasco. And then he was like, I think you better just. Like, he just didn't want to ship it. I don't know how much work it was for him to ship it, but, like, he was acting like it was just the biggest, the biggest pain and uh, or even just undoable. And we ended up getting it to fit in the box and shipped it, but Damn. hopefully oh, he was yeah. able to put it in the right area where it's supposed to get sent out. Yeah, hopefully we get it back. Uh, also, it reminded me, Mike, when you talked about F1 in Vegas. Uh, so we went to Diplo, which was an electric show. It was in this really small club basically it was one of the small ones so we ended up getting there really early so we got front row some of the crew hung out the whole time some of you guys didn't you guys dipped i think early. ken and i were there for a total of four minutes it was a, it was 45 yeah okay. we were there for 45 i'd say we 45. were all set i was being sarcastic I, before, I looked at my watch and i was like ah wow that was 45 minutes yeah i was like ah I did don't you include stay. how long we stood in line for including standing in line okay, it was well, we yeah, stood in line I mean. for probably 20 yeah. Uh, no, I, I watched my watch when I when I walked in. And I was like, I'm going to stand here this long, and then I'm going to leave. I'm going to go gamble. That's, that's funny, Ken, because you normally like shows. Well, he's got a broken neck, Ryan. Yeah, Fair enough. Chilled. I really didn't want to stand around, like, getting, getting pushed around by and people. Stuff. And then I just, I was not having fun standing there, You like, getting pushed well, around. Well, we weren't supposed to stand, Ken. We weren't. <coughs> so, uh, should I just say it? So, basically, yeah. uh, we got a table given to us. Which we never go to clubs. We don't know shit. And also, like, I don't, we're not, we're really care. We're not we don't so really Mark care. Didn't we're have, pretty simple. Mark didn't have to pay? No. no. Oh. So, oh, you didn't even know. So, no. Matilda had talked with, uh, we'll bleep them, Man. but the win. And uh, they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, we're going to give you guys a, a table because they, like, wanted us there. Because, you know, basically, it's just like, get. Well, it's they like, ca- like they legit cared about how many Instagram followers. Right. Yeah. Which yeah. is, yeah. I mean, That's as you expect, they wanted influencers mm-hmm. or whatever. And they had this whole table set up, and we got a table for all of our dudes and all that. And uh, we go (laughs) showing up up with our posse, which keep in mind, we didn't bring our girlfriends with. Ten dicks deep. Obviously, we're not rolling around with stray girls because we have girlfriends. Um, So we roll up. Basically, I think it was 11 of us, 11 dudes, and all of us just... Not and they they looked at us, and I go, yeah, we got a table. It's under CJ. Dude, that's so funny. CJ Lotzer, and he... He goes back to the thing. I'm like, watch him talking to the guy. They look at we us, look back, and then he just comes back and goes, oh, yeah, uh, there's no more tables left. <laughs> <laughs> that makes so much. I didn't think about I that until right now. I think they just looked at us and were like, right. no. we're not totally. giving these guys a table. Walk in there, not a single table had anyone sitting at it. Yeah. I mean, like, That's it a- did, I look like a freaking goon. I got, like, a mop haircut. Dude, and- you should have saw how I was dressed. Well, I look good, but I also look like an idiot. I mean, we look. We think we look good. I don't know what people in clubs in Las Vegas think we look like. But, uh, we looked like a bit of a Motley crew. Yeah, uh, Ken's so. in a neck brace. Yeah, we we're, didn't look like we were coming there to like get a bunch of bottle service and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, shit, we would have paid and whatever, yeah. but uh, I don't know. We were trying to have it. Would have been nice. We could have sat. We I think yeah. like that would actually been get a little taste of like this. Uh, Royalty treatment, <laughs> luxurious of Vegas having, experience. Yeah, of being an influencer. Yeah, but they saw us, took one look, and we're like, "No tables left." <laughs> that makes total sense. And we got there early because we then they told I'm us assuming, we need to be there at that time. Okay, so that's then, why we got because I was so wondering. Early. I was like, "Damn, we got here so early!" And normally, I'm all about it. I didn't even make it the whole night, but we got up to the front because we got there so early. And again, normally, like I don't, I wouldn't try to get to the front because you get beat up up there. Most of the time when the opener's there, we're chilling. Every time there's a little bit of hint that Diplo might come out, we get a little push, get a little push. Dude, I wish Ben was here too. We'll have to talk about this. Ben did not know how good he had it where he was. Oh, so yeah, we, he we was perimeter- sheltered. We were originally perimetering the whole group. We were perimetering, and like that's, it, it's hard to do once the opener comes out. Anyway, Ben's chilling on the rail, just chilling, just like ass out, <laughs> s- sipping his drink. He's got like Mark on his yeah. right, Butch behind him, yeah. you behind yeah. him. Butch like, is like security. We dude. had this whole little like security bubble around. It kind of ended up being a little bit of Justin and Ben. That yeah. was like they were on the inside. And I, I even kept telling Ben that. I'm like, dude, that you, you're just 
just enjoy dance and stuff because you don't get to do Mike's this. Mike's kidding. Tell me. And, yeah. yeah. Mike's boxing <laughs> I mean, out people. Uh, uh, and that's what, like, it was tough because I knew I'm not too pushy. I can't get back to the front. So, like, Tint and I finally tapped out after about an hour in a Diplo. Keep in mind, an hour in a Diplo, he starts at one. Yeah. One and so late. Uh, that's tough. And then this dude in a in a wheel well, a bunch of people behind us were like, There's a guy in a wheelchair trying to get to the front, you decks. <laughs> and then I was like, Okay, yeah, let's where's he at? Okay, he's right there. Honestly, I was thinking about leaving, so you can actually have the spot. We'll kind of shuffle him in. Thank you. And yeah, I was those like chicks were dead. <laughs> like, sorry. I mean, yeah, we'll get him to the front. And so then we did give him our spot. But you guys stayed. I mean, it was fun, but like I feel like there's so yeah. many other shows you go to for so much less money that would it's be more really, fun. But I had a really good time. It well, did blow bumps. So what was fun about it is me and Ben were front row and Justin. And so, I mean, you're probably six, seven feet away from Diplo. And then Lewis Hamilton showed up, who was the F1 racer, yep. if you don't know. So being that we were so close, dead center, front row, like the lights kind of were coming on us. So like we... Like almost got into like a couple moments where like they were looking at us. Like Lewis Hamilton was looking at Ben, going like this, and then Ben was dancing back. That's fun. That was sweet. And like you know, I mean, yeah, they're normal people, but also they're not. They're freaking superstars. So it was really sweet to kind of get that type of interaction. And then they go like, "You guys down in the front, like you guys are raging." Blah blah blah. And then they brought shots around to us. And what? Like, you guys shots just in the you front. guys. Yeah, they. Br- I mean, they probably bought like twenty. Yeah. But oh, they, but they went pretty cool. Right to us, and then people like attacked them. That whole experience couldn't happen somewhere else. Like I was just explaining. Oh, you can go somewhere else. Yeah, Ben. ben that was, experience. Was having a good time. You yeah. were yeah. too, dude. Oh, dude, I had a I blast. saw the video. So you're on his story, and you were <laughs> fist bumping so goddamn hard. Wearing my pink pineapple shirt, like, I stood out. <laughs> yeah, dude, I was having Ryan, a fucking on, blast. On Diplo story. Yeah. Yeah. That's Ryan pretty legit. On. Dude, I don't know why. I just don't enjoy when i'm sitting there and getting pushed around in like the thing no and see honestly if i'd even been for a while i was one row back yeah and that was not a tenth as fun as it was yeah. being on the rail because then it's only people from behind and you just grab like yeah this, and then you kind of only have a little bit to block mm-hmm. but when you're in maybe the front, i just wasn't on the right level i so yeah that too and you know, i used to like that but i i feel like as i've gotten older it's less and less enjoyable, mm-hmm. whereas I can stand back a little further and not have to be right at the front. If we weren't on the rail, I would not have been anywhere near the front. I would have been standing in the back. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I agree. It's either like to the very front or just don't get, yeah, it's not Again, fun to get pushed around. Just Same thing. I wish, I wish uh, Ben was here to explain his inter- interaction with Diplo or uh, then Lewis he Hamilton. threw the cake at him and he oh, caught yeah. it. Oh, Diplo yeah. Diplo threw the cool. cake. Ben caught the cake. What's Everyone up with they always have cakes there? Why? why well, it was uh, Diplo's birthday. Steve oh, Aoki does that's cake. That's thing, but yeah. Okay, yeah. And then it, it was Diplo's like birthday. They all have cakes that they throw into the crowd. <laughs> yeah. So it was uh, It was quite the experience. Pretty Me lit. and Lewis Hamilton and Diplo are best friends now. That's amazing. You should DM him tell him to come hang. <laughs> ben <laughs> said he was like, put on there. He's like, yo, say, Lewis, let's party tonight. And I was like, he doesn't want to party with us. He's like, yeah, he will. We're boys. And I was like, no, he doesn't. I was like, I guarantee, look at us. No, he doesn't want to party with us. Look look at the, all the chicks he's with. You think you want us there? <laughs> Dude, meet us back at the, we're on the ninth floor. We got, we sh- sharing a king right now, but yeah, come yeah. party. Yeah, come back. We can like hang out in the casino floor or something. We were planning on getting free drinks at the slots, playing plenty slots. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's just like, no. <laughs> I'm good, man. Thanks. It was a pretty fun trip. Glad to be home. Glad to be back to work. Yeah, glad to be back at work. Still taking L's though. Yeah. Uh, we were supposed to go drifting today, take my car to the drift track, and it was running like shit, and then it actually started running halfway. You know, I got to basically get it fixed. I don't know what's wrong with it. Get it tuned. But uh, it started running like shit again today when we were supposed to go to the drift track. Keep in mind. That thing the, just doesn't want to go to the drift track, dude. Yeah, <laughs> I know. And, and the worst run. part is this is it's just it's starting to feel like my whole life. Alrighty, guys, quick break in the podcast for a word from today's sponsor, Blue Chew. Do yourself a favor and listen up, fellas, because boy, do we have a deal for you. Getting to the bedroom is stressful enough, but once you're there, don't spend time worrying about not performing your best and get a boost from Blue Chew. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable form at a fraction of the cost. And now they also have mint flavored chewables, so you can stay hard and fresh. 
Bluetooth tablets help men achieve harder and stronger erections to combat all forms of ED. But fellas, the thing that I love the most about Blue Chew is it's an online prescription service. So no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. And it ships right to your door in a discreet package. Quit putting it off thinking to yourself, oh, I don't have time or I'm too embarrassed to go over there. You'll thank yourself when the time comes. The process really is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your first prescription within days. Blue Chew's licensed medical providers work with you to find the right ingredient and strength for your prescription. And if you don't like swallowing pills, that's no problem. Blue Chew's tablets are chewable, made right here in the USA, and they prepare and ship direct, so it's cheaper than a pharmacy. So, fellas, if you could use a boost and have some extra confidence when it's time to perform, visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And don't forget the special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code wide open at checkout. Just pay five bucks shipping. That's bluechew.com promo code wide open, which is all one word wide open to receive your first month free. Thanks, Blue Chew. Hey guys, quick break in the podcast for a word from today's sponsor, Manscaped. This holiday season, I'll be giving thanks to our friends over at Manscaped. Everybody loves turkey and stuffing, but you'll be looking like dessert with the help of Manscaped's Performance Package 4.0. Trim your pumpkins and save 20% off, plus free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash wide open. If you've been listening for a while, you know that we love Manscaped. Manscaped has been keeping us trimmed and fresh for a long time, and if you've been holding out, there really is no better time than now to get a 10 out of 10 Manscaping experience. It's time to give thanks to the Manscaped Performance Package 4.0, or as I like to call it, the perfect package for your package. Inside, you'll find their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, the Crop Reviver Toner, the Performance Boxer Briefs, and a travel bag to hold it all together. Their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. And it also gives you the ability to turn on the 4000K LED spotlight on and off when needed for a more precise shave. Plus, it's waterproof. Gifting Manscaped is the ultimate hack to become the family favorite, so save 20% off plus free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash wide open. That's right, 20% off plus free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash wide open. Be thankful this holiday season for the best gift of all from Manscaped. Your balls will thank you. Thanks, Manscaped. Back to the podcast. And this is partially me and my planning, but just, I've been trying to get this thing for a while and get it going. And we've have other like things, but you know, like I end up wrapping my sled at the end of the sled season and wrapping my bike right before winter and getting a drift car right before winter. A lot of things right before winter, but dude, it was like 29 as a high today and like super windy and like trying to freeze in rain. And tomorrow is double that. Yeah. Like even worse. I, I think you might be, uh, SOL I'm scared. Springs. Yeah. So then I look at the the weather and then then the high for the next ten days is like twenty seven. The, the low which, the low is like negative five. Which reminds me, thin ice is coming. It's coming. It is. And I think we should do a contest of who guesses when the lake freezes over. They get something. I don't know. Okay. Instagram like picture thing. You make. A contest I'm just gonna make a money. slightly guesstimated guess here based oh, on for the, the weather. Crowd, for Wait. The yeah. Crowd. Like everybody. Oh. Okay. Okay. I don't I know. Like I was just that. thinking I about like it. We that. can implement it. Um, I think with the weather, with the way the weather is going to be, dude, I have co- confidence it's going to happen like soon. But a lot of people on like the Big Cormorant Facebook page were saying like a month. Oh, wow. wow. Then you're talking the whole lake. Yep. Yeah, dude, I would say. I I'm I would say the forecast. Uh, there's like two days above, above freezing and then below freezing for like 24 hours of the day for a week. It's pretty good. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm mostly. Say, I'm going to say the 20th. Okay. Of November. Of November. Oh, also that reminds me, last podcast, I said, hey guys, this is great. It gets posted the day before my birthday, all that. I totally lied. Uh, This podcast gets posted (laughs) on my birthday. I don't know what happened. I think I looked at the wrong calendar. Oh, and it's on. Yeah, it's on whatever (laughs) today when it comes Did you leave that part in the last one? I did. Right. Because it was the only, it was how we intro. Yep. So I was like, well, it's sticking. So thanks. (laughs) That's even better though, that the fact that if this next one was the day before it, it'd be like, eh. Yeah, same difference, but yep. it's actually on the day. But it's on the day. So, happy birthday, Ryan. I'm going to go doc. late. Happy birthday. <laughs> I'm going to go later. I'm going to say December 2nd. Ice Ooh. Ooh. Okay. I'm going to say the 21st, November 21st. And I'm going the 25th. Wow, I'm which really is, late. I don't know. I, honestly, depending on what happens the next week and whether you could be right. So, yeah, we'll end up posting a 
contest around that somewhere. I don't know. Throw your guesses in the comments and yeah. we'll figure it out from there. We'll You'll see. win something. We'll see uh, how windy it is. I want it to freeze over perfect. The per more perfect it freezes over, the more fun we can have on it. Um, I'm mostly just not, I'm not ready for the cold weather. Yeah, cold weather sucks compared to warm weather, but I'm just like, this is the most fun I've ever had ever playing in the dirt this mm -hmm, summer, mm -hmm, easily. Yeah. You know, I'd say like two summers ago, we did a lot of boat. Uh, this summer, we got plenty of it, but a lot more playing in the dirt for all of it's us. Really. Of the track. Yeah, yeah, for the track, the land. So I think that's what it is. It's like everyone's like, you're excited for snowmobiling? Yeah, I always am, but a lot less than... Well, now you'll have a track, though, for hitting right. jumps. this and is that, true. I think our track's going to work great for, like, snowmobiles. Yeah, I agree. I think it is, too. It's so wide and just, like, jump. such perfect trajectories. Yeah, I might have slides. to put some studs in, but... Uh, that's true. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I guess I didn't start thinking about thin ice until now. Now you got me kind of going. We got a lot to do on it, for sure. We got all of our street bikes that we're going to be putting on ice, which that'll be fun in itself. Yeah. Got to get the tires changed over. And of course. Ooh. Okay. Speaking of street bikes, this reminded me last week you said we should start a segment called do a wheelie, right? And I found the perfect clip to kick off the segment and people should send it in. They can DM us on the Life Wide Open podcast Instagram channel and then uh, we'll see them if they're, if they're good and then we might use them in the video, but... And in the video, do they have to say do a wheelie? Because that, I was just wondering that. Like someone sent me one and it was super <laughs> funny. And like you don't necessarily have to have someone in it saying do a wheelie right beforehand. But it is the vibes. No, you don't have to. But it is perfect that this one does. <laughs> wheelie! They better. <laughs> do a wheelie. <laughs> oh. 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 Why would you tell him to do <laughs> yeah. It's my favorite party church. Why would you tell him to do that? In the poor kid. The kids rattled. He's like, oh no, I didn't know that could happen. He's Rewinded like, but a little you, bit. You told him to. Go to his face with his hand above it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's funny. I see a little kid like that. That guy's smiling in the back. He thought that shit was funny. If you think of it like the dude would never have done that if they weren't cheering for it, but oh, that yeah, was it's perfect. Hard to know. That was a just, perfect kickoff. Just a classic example of don't do something that you shouldn't be doing. All right. Uh, I got something for you guys. Okay. Um, have you ever drank apple cider vinegar? I want to say. like oh, I, no. I, I, I would have guessed. So. Isn't that really good for you? <laughs> Supposedly. Good, but it does not. It, vinegar. It does not yeah. sound good. Doesn't it taste weird? Yeah. So I brought some. And I would love for us to take some small shots of it to, to see how it really is. I've never had it either. Go Isn't it him. supposed to actually like fight sickness though? That's it's the point of it. It's supposed to improve your you yeah. taste test. No, no, no. Immune well, system. originally it was just going to be a taste test. Uh, I was like, I've never had it perfectly. Neither of you guys either. But the fact that everyone's about to potentially come down with some sickness could be perfect. Let's run it. Let's do it. Well, I poured some rather small. Shots. You don't have to finish it. <laughs> it does not smell good. Holy it smells like vinegar. Can. Dude. Just smell it. <laughs> I might the fact have that I can't smell this that well Ooh, that is alarming. Oh, is oh, alarming. No. I might have to plug my nose. My heart is racing. Yeah, that was gnarly. I haven't done it yet. All right. I was like, what are you going for? It? Maybe once. All right, if you gag, don't gag into the mic. No one likes to hear that. Yep. Make yep. sure you throw up into the mesh trash can. <laughs> that wow, is... that's bad. <clears throat> I didn't even drink all of it. I didn't either, but <sighs> I did. Happy, I did. happy, I tried it. Oh, why does it not taste that bad to me? The worst part is the remaining vinegar. It's just uh, it's very vinegar. It's, it's really funny. The best part is the apple cider portion of it. The worst part is oh, you is guys it... drank the whole thing. That's why I didn't taste. So I bad. mean, I almost did. I'm gonna. I I barely took any. Are you sure it's good for you to drink? I. I I think I've heard this about before. To be honest, no, I'm not sure. All right, I'm gonna do it. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, I almost threw up. Uh, that's nasty. That wasn't that bad. You Am also I, drink tons of healthy shit that tastes gross. That's true. Yeah, like so I've you're seen, trained. <laughs> that's why I just assumed you had like CJ's. You know, tried not a, tried at all, but some algae stuff that you keep in the fridge or the freezer. It's like green grass or something, blue yeah. grass algae. <laughs> like, I don't even know. Yeah, and that stuff's that stuff's a lot worse than that. Really? 
Dude, whoa. According to this thing. I'm alarmed. My insides feel like warm. Like I just yeah, took a shot. Yeah, you feel it go well. down. That's weird. It's actually alarming to me that I couldn't taste that. Like, yeah. You can smell that either. You can. I could smell it. Smell it. Reminds me of uh, when you dye Easter eggs. Yeah, oh. that's that's the smell. Because yep. you use vinegar with yeah, that. Yeah, I think must. so. Uh, it's funny. It has 0% everything other than one milligram of calcium and 10 milligrams of potassium. So what's the point of it? I don't know. There must be something in vinegar that's good for you, and the apple apple cider must make it taste. Not to be consumed. That was a while. Wait. Really? Just fucking with me. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, like, it's great for food. Uh, dude, I don't know. I, I, there maybe is the drinkable stuff and not drinkable stuff. Who's the guy that used to drink apple cider vinegar? Alex, Alex Ernst. Ernst. Oh, yeah, dude. Is that just on the internet? Nah, he not really. He kind of gave up after but yeah, basically, David Dobrik got exposed. David Dobrik's best friend would make like kind of pretty funny vlogs, but they're really like weird. random, yeah. weird out there. I like uh, that. He would drink that every morning. And he's he, from he, Minnesota, Minnesota, guys. That's right. Really? It, I wonder if he's back home now. That's right. It <laughs> aids in weight loss, reduces cholesterol, uh, lowers blood sugar, and improves symptoms of diabetes. All right. Well, diabetes. Drink a little more. So it's more of a longevity health than a potential short-term. immune system boost. I'm all about short-term games right now. <laughs> yeah, that was bad. <laughs> like the, Sorry, my fellas. insides are like warm right now. Yeah. That I don't need cool. to do that again. Well, I'm glad we did that. That <laughs> is, uh, I'm good. Never doing that again. <clears throat> I might have to make the rest of the boys do it. Yeah, you pretty much have to. Yeah. I feel like Ben could do that one easy. Yeah. He's true. always taking vitamins. He's like, oh stuff. yeah, we never had apple juice as kids. We had <laughs> apple cider <laughs> vinegar. Apple cider <laughs> vinegar. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, it's super good warm. You guys drink it cold? Oh, yeah. No, you got to heat it up and mix uh, it in with some uh, shavings from your lawn. Ken, what do you got for me? Well, I'm going <laughs> to preface this with, uh, have you had any updates on your IRS audit? Unfortunately not. Oh, man. Okay. I, I, yeah, I mean, I can get into depth with it. Sent the stuff in. Um, tried to update my address so they could send it here. I haven't heard anything. Okay. Well, I got you a t-shirt. Oh, uh, should help with it. It's just the same. It's it's just the Barney T-shirt. No, no, this one's oh, this one's better. Life's, Life's too short, short to pay, pay taxes. taxes. Let me see it. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> that's, that's really actually good. awesome. Another great. Shirt that's a t-shirt. Ryan type of shirt, but it fits Micah's lifestyle a lot better. I pay my taxes like a good right. human being. Life's too short. What is that? A Lamborghini on the back? <coughs> it's the uh, Jordan Belfort car. Yeah, it's and a then, Lamborghini Countach. Oh, is that like a knockoff version of the guy from American Psycho? Yeah, not Christian Bale, but it's somebody like a else. Knockoff Pam Anderson. Yeah, I love it. Thank you, Ken. You're That's welcome. actually a sick shirt. I'd wear that because, <clears throat> especially on the podcast, all you see is too short. That is true. <laughs> Life's too short, and then all that burning. Life's too short. <laughs> It's perfect. Just like we have that poster. It says, it doesn't even make any sense, but it says everything will kill you. So choose something fun. And then it ended up in our Fargo Inc. thing. I just like it bought in like a $5 right. poster. I was so embarrassed. Was what like, does it say again? Everything will kill you. So choose something fun. It's like we just like look at it every day. Like the motto. Hit it. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, like, yeah. it's like a sports team. When you <laughs> walk out of the locker room, you tap I it. I do remember that. When they took a picture of it, we were almost like, ah, oh, maybe. I did. And then he was like, that's, that's, no, it's like perfect for you guys. That's a joke. <laughs> Everything will kill you, so choose something fun. <laughs> That's fucked up. Ken, how how are the the final weeks of the neck brace? It it didn't seem to slow you too down too much down in Vegas, but it definitely did. I'm ready to be done with this thing. I bet. And it is nice to see some light at the end of the tunnel there. Going to the doctor tomorrow. It's really? Nice. Is it yeah. sore? Uh not bad. It's mostly like if I get like some weird angles and it's bad or like rolling over in bed, like I got to like, like twist a certain way or else it like I can really feel like something hurts back there. Did anybody ask you about it in Vegas? All the time. Because you most de- annoying oh. thing. You because you looked really hardcore walking around like I'm trying to think of I did not see a single other person in a neck brace the whole time. We were in I Vegas. saw one chick. Oh, what? Really? <laughs> I, I saw her walking by. I was like, Ken. It's, what it's funny because I her. did not see her because you're in this neck brace. You are lost. All right. She probably forward. didn't see you either. But Dude. I think me and uh, I don't know if it was Kevin or who, but we I, saw another girl and you guys walked right past each other because you probably don't <laughs> both, love both you two are like horses. With she was in a different on. one, though. That's she was funny. in like a rubber one. Oh, it was like a donut. <clears throat> she got the cheap one. Yeah. Like sometimes I'd roll up to Ken at the blackjack table where I could find you a lot and 
I'd, I'd be like in my head, you know, just a little schmoozed up. He's like, I'm like, why is he not like talking to me? But he can't turn oh, yeah. around. He's like, he was responding, but I just couldn't hear him. He's like, how's, how's it going, Micah? I'm like, dude, what's up? Yeah, when yeah. we were eating dinner at the bar too, and you were like, hey, good to see you. And then he turned back. And then I was like trying to talk to you. And then I could kind of just tell it was a major inconvenience. Also at SEMA, I saw you like walking around. And you just go like this to try to look at everything, which was hard enough to look at everything. So I can't even imagine walking around. Oh, I just thought of a eyes. really funny thing that would have been really easy because you wouldn't have needed to do anything really, Ken. We should have mic Ken up and then have him go up to people who are next to their builds really casually and go kind of go, damn, dude, your ride broke my neck. <laughs> Real <laughs> just, <neck breaker. laughs> yeah, just see what they react. That's all you'd need. You get in the conversation if you wanted. Ken damn, goes dude. over with papers. <laughs> He's your like ride broke in there. I was here yesterday and I saw your ride. Anyways, uh, yeah, my neck's pretty fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that would be really funny. You have to talk with my lawyer. <laughs> yeah, so when you do you, uh, you know how like when you go into a cast and then after that you can kind of go into a soft brace? Is there something like that for you or is it straight to physical therapy? I have no idea. He, the doctor like didn't mention I anything. I think he goes into physical I, therapy. I think it's physical therapy, but I honestly do not know. Ken's like, once the doctor told me I could still drink, I basically turned him, tuned him out the whole time. It's funny because the first like couple days I didn't, and then I saw him at the bar, and he's like, "Yeah, you can get, you can get you can drink. Why aren't you?" <laughs> like, oh, it's okay. all, it's all the information you? I need. Pussy. <laughs> it's gonna be weird having Ken with a working neck. Yeah, I can't wait. <sighs> yeah. Whatever happened with not going to the Palmers? So Rich, Evan, and I were gonna go to the Palmer. They had their last pit bike race there on Saturday, and it's like, at first he asked me, I was like, ah. Well, I mean, we'll be in Vegas. He's like, it's like an hour and a half drive. Okay, cool. And then apparently they're having Rich build a track for them. Um, so they they basically had the race Saturday, and then they wanted Rich to rebuild the track for them Sunday. So he's like, I don't want to go Saturday. I have to be there at 630, but I still want to be there Saturday night. But he didn't even do anything. I just think Rich just wanted to keep gambling. Yeah. So we never went. Looked lit. Like, they have some crazy pit bike races. Now they do the e-bike races. I mean, but I don't think I would have entered it's still, really? it's, dude, it's still like, too much? I don't know. It's like, no, maybe not the jump size anymore, but like the competitiveness. Yeah, that was kind of the thing. Like, it's the, I mean, and I would have loved it. If I would have been there, I would have just filmed. They are so goddamn quick on pit bikes um, and every other bike compared to us. But when you compare them on pit bikes, I don't know if there's really anyone that much faster than them. No, oh, I mean, yeah. especially they, they, their they home races. Top-tier they always win. Pit top bike two. riders. I mean, that's, I swear, that's all they do is just rip their pit bikes around their track. And they're so fast and so good it was just like evan is is the best pit bike rider i know and he he i don't even know what place yeah. he would have gotten that. yeah right and they're like yeah we got pit bikes for you and but yeah i just i the level of competitiveness seems like i, I basically i'll be straight with it i wouldn't want to go out there and then have a bunch of people i mean it was kind of like when we were there even though that was fine but i thought these guys were pit bike guys they you're suck like, like we are because they because we're kind of being compared and, to the best they suck. Like I don't want that to be said about me. No. Like I, so we are pretty open about like our skill level. We've never been like we're good. Yeah, right. So it's like yeah, we're not I'm always just stoked to progress and then stoked when people are about us progressing or anyone. Yeah. But yeah, I never made it to Especially that. Especially home track advantage. <sighs> yeah, that's true. I wanted to go if you guys were gonna go just to film it, but then at the same time, I feel like races don't make a lot of like. No. yeah it would have really it would have been more watch, for the just like it would have cool. been more for the connection like the hangout there's yeah. a lot you know a lot I of like those guys cool names guys. that go there yeah it would have been fun yeah maybe this winter when we do if we do another rv trip yeah, or something try to plan that in because that'd be pretty sweet to like no end way. up at one of those things um, yeah i agree just for the experience because they look gnarly dude there's i feel like there's always a fight or yeah. a, at least a fairly gnarly crash or some type of like competitor fight there's always something going on yes side events that just somehow happen yeah because there's just so many Donkey people like-minded yeah like that <laughs> all right enough about our trip i've uh this is just a very basic question that i wanted to ask for a long time uh what what was the most played video game for you growing up Ooh, like you know you don't need to go too into depth just why what it was and why you played it so much more than every other game Call of Duty, but obviously there's so many different ones. Yeah. Like, I played them all pretty fair amount, but some of them, like, definitely outshined. Dude, you you and I used to play together, or we did play together on Modern Warfare 3. You remember that? Yeah. Way back in the day. Yeah. 
I and know. yours and you and obviously like I played a lot of Call of Duty too. Mine is Skate Three, probably yeah. logged like what? even more on that than like GTA and again I guess CODs. But you played a lot of what's the NASCAR? Okay, there's two games and that then Burnout. Really, oh, okay, three games and they were all racing <laughs> games. I was really into racing games. One is Need for Speed. You can't really go wrong with that. No. Um, Burnout Paradise was sick because you could crash. And, like, there really wasn't anything with that good of graphics back then. So, like, to have a game where, like, when you crash the car, it actually fell apart. Like, normally it was just, like, a brick that hit something. Yeah. So that was sick. But definitely probably my most played game was when I was, like, 12 and I had a GameCube. And I played um, NASCAR Thunder 2003 or something like that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Starts out with Magic Carpet Ride playing. Yep. It's ah, that Legendary. game is so lit. Nostalgia for sure. Yes, exactly. Dude, I feel like nowadays, and maybe I'm just completely wrong, but uh, back in the day before like Xbox Live or PlayStation Live, or really it was like a thing everyone had. You would almost go through so many games. I felt like you needed so many more yeah. games because you would kind of get bored <clears> of <throat> them relatively quick. I love James Bond. Simpsons Hit and Run. Oh, that, that was, was so fun. <laughs> um, God, what was it? Tony Hawk's Pro yeah, Skater. Tony Hawk's Pro, Pro Skater 4 and Tony Hawk's Underground, Underground 2. Yeah. The best games. I actually went and bought Tony Hawk's Underground 2 and then was going to play it on my Xbox One like last spring when I was sick. And it doesn't work. It's not compatible oh, yeah. if you have oh, because it's an Xbox original game and you can't pop it. I just assume that oh, you could because you used to be able to do that on the Xbox 360. But oh, I, really? I think it's like yeah, you it's can play it only far. like you can only play like one generation older yeah. or something like that. Yeah, but that game was lit, dude. The worst part about trying to turn on like a game now is you turn it on and then it's like your Xbox has to update. That takes an hour. Yeah. And then you get in and it's like the game's got to update and that takes an hour. And then you're just like, all right, never mind. I don't want to play anymore. Like the it's two hours late. that I was going to play are already gone. And then before you know it, it's another month until you have time to play mm -hmm. Xbox. Yeah, that does happen. Ken, did you game at all ever? Uh, Forza and mm -hmm. oh, Forza's yeah. are good. Uh, why, why can't I think of it? Clearly it wasn't too Can important. You, um, the freaking L.A. driving. Why? Oh, uh, Midnight. No. Midnight Club? That, that too. Um, what's the? Why the <laughs> Crazy Taxi? That's a good G one too. GTA. Wow. That oh, was, my that was rough. <laughs> and GTA? Holy shit. Thank you for that beautiful um, piece of en entertainment for not being able to remember GTA. I, I sometimes walk downstairs and, uh, and see Ken playing his airplane game. That's fun, yeah. I yeah. got airplane like, game? The Microsoft Flight Simulator thing. It's kind of fun. No way. Wait. Yeah, I'll go downstairs to do some laundry, and Ken's kind of post up on the couch just playing. Flying I around? Yeah. Is Post's there, like, up? missions, or do you just fuck like around? They, they have, like, a top gun update, and it's, like, you got to, like, do the low flying thing, go around that, and then there's, like, a whatever, like, supersonic plane that he flew. You can fly that thing. It's really boring really quick because it's, yeah. like, real time, and it's just, like... I mean, I moral of the story is if Ken... Is on a flight and someone needs to land that thing. I'm pushing him. To the <laughs> There's front. no way. I crash every time. True. But it's fun. <laughs> well, he should keep us alive for a little bit longer. Do you? Can you fly around here? Does it look real? Like is our shop on it? Yeah. Yeah. Like you, what? You what? take off from like the oh, DL cool. airport and and see our shop. I never really looked. But you didn't think to take off from the DL airport and look at your own house? No. Fuck. What? That's, That's really, really cool. cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. That is pretty cool. So where do you usually take off from? I don't know, somewhere interesting like Florida, Hawaii, somewhere that looks yeah, cool. Yeah, makes sense. Otherwise, like around here, it's just like flat. Yeah, it's got like satellite sense. pictures of the ground. Okay, so it probably would have yeah. the shop in there. You but it's not like in our parking lot. It's not can like 3D. That? Yeah, can you land on Highway 11? I never tried. You should try that. For how much you play that game, you must really play it seriously. You come down like <laughs> once a month when I'm playing Xbox, and like you always time it just right where it's, oh, He's playing that game. He must play that all the time. I, I don't care. I'm not making fun of you at all. I just I just assumed you liked that game because I figured it'd be difficult or I don't know. I maybe turn my Xbox on once every two, three months. Yeah, yeah it makes sense. It is nice though. Like the, what, what do they call it now? The Game Pass or whatever. You pay like 15 bucks a month and you get like all the games that you can download. And Yeah, but it's it's limited. It's but, not like, like you couldn't get Call of Duty. It's only at yeah. Microsoft exclusives. Oh, yeah. And, uh, not get, not the best like I, game. I, get, I download this. I get sick of it. Delete yeah, it. It's download easier. another one. I agree with what you're saying. You're not paying 50 bucks a title for something you'll play for two days and then delete. 
I'm so old. I'm only interested in, in the classics at this point. Yeah. <clears throat> and the only thing, um, as far as being interested in something new is like, dude, yeah. I mean, we talked about it before, uh, simulator, driving simulator, not flying. Oh, like, dude, I want a driving simulator here so bad. That was fun, they had man. a whole bunch at SEMA. I and think I how sick it'd really be, wanted. like right over there. Honestly, it'd right. be a good spot. Yeah, it would. Or it could even go on our little... They're pretty expensive, thing. though. I know, that's the problem. I saw one in this car club I'm in, and they like made some exclusive one. And I mean, it had everything, but it was like 10 grand. I was like, holy shit. But and, I would like one, just at least with the steering wheel and the pedals and right. maybe like a little bit of feedback. It doesn't have to have the thing where the whole yeah, thing Yeah, it doesn't have to tilt. And, but I mean, so then you break it down. It's like, okay, for the cost of it, I mean, I'm sure the PC doesn't even be that insane to run like t- four games because you're not playing that many other games on it. But you got the cost of your PC, your monitors, and this that alone has to be three grand. I don't know. That's true. We could just go buy like a Beater Bonneville and then go drive around in the parking lot and do the <laughs> same thing. <laughs> Almost and get the real the real life experience out of it. I just love when people like cut cars in half and then actually put the simulator in it. In it? It's a oh, lot yeah. of it's a lot of work for kind of for show. Just but do it with a new Corvette. <laughs> Buy like a salvage one. Anybody looking for the rear end? We got it for sale. Buy a perfectly good one. Chop it in half. Yeah. Do it with what's like the worst car ever made? Just have like a Pontiac Aztec. Half of a Pontiac Aztec sitting in the I wonder shop. what the worst. I hate, yeah, my brain just went to Aztec immediately Same. even before you said I, it. I thought Prius right away, but. Yeah. Okay, yep. What, yeah, what would be the worst car ever made? I feel like you would, I, I would have thought that you would have some more appreciation towards Priuses, Ken. Fuck no way. I don't know, it's a fellow fuel efficient vehicle. EV rig. It's ugly. It's slow. Why would okay. I care? All right. Man, okay, fair Shit. enough. <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah. Figured you guys all kind of rolled as one. Fuck no. You you feel Teslas <laughs> are okay yeah. up here. Top tier. See, I mean, now if you're going to the store to, if you're like, I want something fuel efficient, we should get a Prius in 2023. They still make Priuses. There's no way. I think they do. I think, I think they, they do. They, they have their really crazy electric though, or something. <coughs> They'd have to be. Yeah, no, you I think, think it's still the... just normal Prius thing that they've been doing for 20 some years now. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I I still don't think no matter how bad gas prices got. I don't think I'd go Prius. I'd right. ride a bike just, before that. Shouldn't. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I mean, I'd drive, I'd drive a, a Tesla or a Fisker or a Rivian or something like that. Some electric car. But I don't think I could go to a Prius. Prius is like, I gave up on life. <clears throat> this is all I have left now. <laughs> Be surprised. My, my Prius. Ryan with a Chevy Volt. I did. That's got to be the worst full electric car ever made, they right? keep those around? Are yeah, those my neighbor around? has one. <laughs> I don't think they make them anymore, but... I remember being like, whoa, Chevy's going full EV? Like, this is before Tesla even was a thing. Yeah. And then they came out and they were like trash, right? It's still got a gas motor in it. It's basically, oh, it does? Yeah, right. it's, it's a Prius, but not. It's, yeah, it's basically oh, a Prius. Yeah, never mind. I uh, I did manage to track down an idiot of the week, if that interests you guys. It sure does for me. So the caption is how to lose your license in five seconds, which leads your brain to this guy doing a burnout on the road. You think, hmm. Probably going to be something stupid. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I saw oh this. Boy. Wait, no, maybe I didn't. Oh! oh my. <laughs> that is bad. So with the caption, how to lose your license in five seconds, I figure buddy gets caught doing a burnout. Cop pulls up on him, pulls him over, and that's what the video is going to be. It's some friends going, ooh. <laughs> Not buddy just completely blacking out on this burnout. And clipping this car, dude. Dude. They're lucky they didn't hit that. Why like, didn't that, that guy pole? slow down? Why was he going like 60? It, 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 sure like, it seemed like his wheels were still like, you know, the turbo is spooling down. And I don't know. But like that was horrible on that guy's part. Horrible. He literally rolled a, a compact four-door car. Yeah, just punted that thing. I mean, <laughs> dude, can you imagine? It had to have hurt. How pissed you're getting out of that car. Dude, I've had people like. You know, almost hit me like running a stop sign or something. Think of how like immediately angry that makes you, bro. Could you imagine someone doing that to you? Yeah, that was a tough. No, day. I mean I agree. Crap. Let's just say uh, someone came into our parking lot, even a, a buddy we know, started doing donuts and just fully side typed tapped a car, one of your cars. Ooh. You would be livid, w- but he didn't almost kill you. Yeah, see, you know, then at that's, least that's one of those things that like money can pay for, and not that money just appears on trees, but at least it's not. You almost killed me and my family type yeah. of deal, mm-hmm. you know, punting me across the road. But it does remind me that someone in a truck did a burnout or 
now there's more in front of our um like driveway I know. Dentist shop please don't do that people don't like when they drive by and see a bunch of burnout I know. marks in it front looks of ours so like it totally looks like we did it yeah well, I was wondering who did that. I was like, who the heck did this? But it wasn't yeah. us, huh? No, yeah. no. I mean, there's also, like, marks out there from us. Like yeah. Evan comes in, hits the brake. That's all I remember. We don't usually put marks out there, but Evan came in and locked the brakes up on the Harley and skidded all the way in. Still kind of same thing. But there's more more out there that we get blamed for yeah. that weren't actually from us. Yeah. yeah. Like, we've stopped doing the razor pulling out on the road because that leaves, like, the sky sideways skid mark and stuff like that but it's, it's just one thing if you do it in your driveway or at the end of your driveway it's like yep i left burnouts at my house but just don't go leave burnouts at other people's houses please i agree i always just get a i mean i'm not in, not encouraging it or being a naysayer just get a kick out of it because it's just the typical like chopped exhaust uh, <laughs> diesel or gas there's <laughs> been a <laughs> couple <laughs> and they just yeah. you're like kind of like double taking you're like cheese dude all right get on with it get on with it get yeah. on with it like oh, da, 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 da. i swear they like, just drive by throw their truck in neutral and just well put it yeah to the floor. you know it's like you get the we, evan took a snap of him doing it in there and then jake's like you're not gonna believe this he's just out in front of my place doing the same thing yeah 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 that yeah. is the problem yeah does huh. anyone feel a little weird after that vinegar uh, I'm yeah. feeling it in my stomach. Yeah, you guys I, feel it? I'm good now, but for a little bit, I'm like, I didn't like that. Mm -hmm. Like the feeling I in my stomach. I can't tell if that beer finally put me over the edge, and and now I'm I'm sick like you guys. Or or I'm the, feeling something overcome my body right now. Or if the apple cider vinegar is doing something to you. Or it's that. like a war going on in there. I was like, <laughs> it's like already battling a sickness, and then the apple cider vinegar hopped on my <laughs> my immune system side and just started attacking. <laughs> They were kicking ass. That's why I'm just like, something going on. I might try another one after this. So we'll see. <laughs> and on that note, we got to get out of here before one of us. Yeah, I need to get out of sitting next to Ryan. He's sick. Yep. Sorry, what? I shouldn't be talking. Ryan's sick? Yeah. Yeah. I got the suds. Ah, oh, shit. I thought. We should have put me and Mike next to each other. <sighs> We're the only two that aren't now. sick. I'm sticking to my guns. All the vitamin C. Cue the song. Down with the sickness. <laughs> dun -dun 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 down with the sick. Happy birthday, Ryan. Hit the subscribe button. Thank you, guys. Peace.